This video will go over the first three weeks of the course in the, in the form of key concepts that I want to just go over with you and just sort of set up the course, if you will. Um, and what we have is um, how does the website, in this case, we call it WordPress, although WordPress is not the only platform to build a website on, but you know, in integrated marketing communication, we have advertising, we have sales promotion in the form of special deals, sales, events, like for, exa for example, um, um, uh, could be um, you know, conferences and uh, trade shows, public relations uh, in the form of non-paid communications to the media, we have direct marketing, we have that in the form of email, direct email, and also direct mail, and also telemarketing. Then we have interactive marketing like social media, word of mouth, the all important review sites for products and services. And we have personal selling, which is how you really promote business to business commerce. Now, and we then you back to advertising. The point I'm going to make is that the website is the storefront to the business and it touches all of these areas of integrated marketing communications more than ever. So the effectiveness of your website is critical. In this particular course project, I'm directing you in, in I'm directing you to a project and um, <clears throat> and it's based on an actual business in the Riverside area. A functioning business so you'll be directed there as a team and what i'm going to ask you to do as a team is to connect with each other and um, get on uh, google drive so you can share uh, ideas about the class project because the the, the true de deliverable for this course will be a class, class project so your current business situation, can it be changed? Is it your final destination? One of the concepts I'm going to ask you to construct is a SWOT analysis. And I just want to go over this real quickly. Everything I ask you to do in the class, I have a, a, um, a model to use and, and adapt to your own purposes. And that can be, be inputted into your, um, your course project. The reason I'm going to go over some of these concepts today is because this course is, is it's about Word, WordPress or website development, but before you develop a website, you have to have a clear vision as to what your business actually is and what it isn't, and what its competition does, what its strengths and weaknesses are, uh, who your audience is, all those things are so important. So strengths and weaknesses are are elements that every business has to know. And you know what are some key advantages? Perhaps you have really good product or it's differentiated in a way that's, that separates it from competitors. What are the internal company factors that makes it better? Maybe you have really great employees. And you, you have weaknesses, which are also internal, internal company factors, as it says here. And the weaknesses could be everything from uh, maybe lack of experience in the sales staff, maybe you have high turnover. So it's inside the building itself. I'd like you to list three to four elements for each area here. Opportunities are, you know, if you look at the opportunity, oh, by the way, a weakness might be a poor website. That could be a weakness. And then the opportunity is maybe building a better website um, that's, uh, that supports the business better. So that could be an opportunity. Um, and, you know, other things could be market segments. The business currently isn't, isn't um, targeting right now. You know, maybe they're serving beverages, but not food or vice versa. So these are some opportunities. Threats are always there and threats have to be recognized by business. And it might be, um, it, these are, again, just like, opportunities external to the company and it might be a poor economy it could be a lot of competition in the area things that the business really can't control within the four walls of the business but it's so critical businesses understand them there is a <clears throat> a, a platform as there's actually a a powerpoint slide in the in the the uh, course content 
it for week one and it's got a, a SWOT analysis you can adapt and use and then put it into your presentation. Now, the other thing is it's a little more of a nuanced concept. It's called a persona. The persona is essentially a uh, description of a character. And the character represents a, a key segment of the audience, of the business's audience. In this case, it's people around 30 years old, uh, female, um, it always has to have demographics and psychographics. The demographics are what somebody is, the, the psychographics are who they are. So what, what is the age? What's the gender? What's the what's the, their education? What's their income? And um, all these things don't have to be there, but age and income and gender should. Um, psychographics are who they are. So what their value systems are. So in this case, this person here, this character, who's not a real person, it's just the image of a person. She is even as a name, she, she enjoys social activity. She may enjoy convenience. She may enjoy quality products. She may be very brand conscious. Those are some of the values that, a, that this person, this character has. And by the way, this is sort of written wrong because this is a age 30 years old. I like to see an age range here, say 30 to 40, something like that. A representative quote, social media usage, that's important because of, are they gonna order online? Are they gonna, uh, do they, are they receptive to apps? Things like that. And then um, what are some cultural factors? If it's a US resident, they probably have the same cultural factors. So, you know, just, you don't, you can, you can, or you don't have to put that in, but loyalty is important. And I, what I like to see is actual logos here, like the Apple logo, the the Starbucks logo, the Whole Foods logo, the whatever, whatever they're loyal to. And then um, these areas are, um, are optional, but you'll see a platform, you'll see a word file that you can use, customize for yourself. You can change, you can change the um, uh, factors here. Uh, you can change the picture, of course, and, I, each each of you should identify a a, um, a, a a segment in the audience. Like it might be families, it might be men, it might be women, it might be students, it might be um, you know just so you need to identify <clears throat> what the, where the business is doing it is who the uh, business audience is right now, but also who they could be uh, connecting with and. Um, so why do we do this? So from a marketer standpoint, if you have a, in the old days, we used to have data sheets that showed the, 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 the different characteristics of, of a target group. Now we, we try to personalize it because marketers, everybody receives this better. The more you can personalize this towards a character who represents a larger group, the, the more the better you can market to them really. So that's why the persona is important. So I'm going to ask each of you to develop a persona uh, <clears throat> for the business. How are you going to know that? Well, you can look at the website currently and a real key is to look at customer reviews like in Yelp, for example, the business might be, there might be a lot of Yelp reviews. It's going to help you identify you know, not only strengths and weaknesses, but also who some of the audience actually is. Another tool I'm going to be asking you to, to deal with is um, the product positioning map. You know, where does the business fit on the map? So I need you to identify at least two competitors, at least two, and, uh, and then you, the business itself. It might be you might be measuring convenience and quality or brand loyalty and convenience or brand loyalty and quality. So in high, 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 low, low. So if you're high up this scale here, you're, you have, in this case, it's dealing with people here, high education, high experience is where you wanna be. High experience, high education, low experience, you need to fix that. In low education, high experience, you need to deal with that and get more education. So this is dealing with people, but I'm going to ask you to build maps uh, for uh, your business. In order to do that, you've got to research 
the, 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 uh, the marketplace and identify who, um, who the, 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 who and what the business is and where they fit in the, mar in the, in the, uh, in the marketplace. So this is how you really measure. Uh, <clears throat> the more you know this, these three tools that I just showed you, the better you'll be able to position eventually the website as to dealing with these. Now, another thing, this is a week two item, but um, selecting a domain name. <clears throat> I'm gonna ask you to do, I'm gonna ask you to look at the, the business's existing domain name. Maybe that's the right domain name, but I need you to, uh, if it is the right domain name and it's a good one, I'll need you to um, uh, tell me why, basically. Go, we decided to keep it the same. For one thing, uh, because it's a high quality, it does these things. Let's go over these real quick. Start with .com. So uh, websites don't use .net anymore, really. I mean, some do. They don't. .gov is a government agency. .org is a nonprofit. I really recommend you use .com because that is what the audience is used to, and that's what they expect. The website should be as short as sweet and sweet as you can make it. Try to make it short. Remember, it has to be typed out by a, a, an audience member. It has to be, uh, and it has to be easy to spell with no hyphens. You use keywords, like for example, if this is kind of an obscure thing, but if fly fishing is your is a keyword, flyfishingadventures.com is better than adventuresinflyfishing.com. So you took out the in um, and this this term this article here so try to make it as simple and direct as you can remember it has to be remembered by an audience member avoid strings of words and here's why because if if you have if you're a fishing business and you've got lures rods lines and poles that's great for keywords but what if somebody doesn't remember the order correctly they're not going to be able to find you so you don't want to do this either um some of this is obvious, but I just thought I'd mention it, the, the logic behind it. And absor uh, avoid obscure terms that people can't spell or don't understand. And what if all the good names are taken? Um, you just want to be creative um, and work around what is open. So if you go to godaddy.com, for example, and you can type in any, um, any uh, uh, idea for a website uh, domain name and it will help you it'll tell you what's available what's taken and how much it'll cost to buy the uh, what you need and again reiterate you may like the web the current website name of the the of the, your um, your um, core of your project business and but tell us why you like it tell me why you like it based on these factors and um, so if, if you were going, and this again is we're into week two and week three here. If you were going to contract out to a website developer or you're gonna do the, the work yourself, I strongly recommend that you identify two websites that you like, that, uh, that you're not gonna copy, okay? But you're going to show the preferred style. In other words, you're not going to copy, uh, but you're going to model. You're going to model. Those. So pick two websites you like. <coughs> this is assuming you want to improve the one that the current business's website. Pick the ones you like and explain why you like them. And a website developer will insist on seeing that because they want to see what your style is, what your preferences are, those types of things. So that's going to be an assignment in the course. And another assignment, we're going into week four now, um, week three, sorry, is um, you're going to build a site map. So would you build anything without a map? You know, so what you have is the home page, and then you have the uh, menu items on top here, okay? And these menu items, uh, we call this the navigation bar. You, you're going to have, you know, about the business. This might be your first one. Um, join us, communicate with us, who the sponsors are, what are events, and what's in the blog page. Then underneath each one of these key terms on the navigation bar, 
there's other pages that link to it that are under it, like a sub subgroup. So I'm gonna need you to build a site map for, for the business itself. And this is based on a proposed website plan um, or architecture you're gonna build. So with that being said, um, I think we're um, I think we're good for now, and um, we're we'll see you in the classroom. If you have any questions, let me know.